Hello everybody and welcome to our flagship event on the circular economy at the 76th United Nations General Assembly. Now, this session is hosted uh, by two organizations, I should say, uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and something of a bigger organization, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. My name is Ikena Azwike and it's my pleasure to be your host. But I'm not the only one here in the studio. I'm also joined by the Dutch Minister for the Environment, Mr. Stephen van den Weyenberg. Stephen, welcome. Thanks very much. And uh, also a big thanks to everybody who will be joining us uh, later this afternoon on this uh, very important issue of the circular economy. Absolutely. Lots of speakers to hear from. Now, today is, of course, uh, not just uh, an important moment to uh, uh, remind ourselves of the, the relevance and the importance that the circular economy has in achieving our um, uh, climate goals set for 2030, but also it's an indication of the increasing political will there is in place to ensure that we are able to accelerate our transition towards a climate resilient economy. We'll be hearing from uh, ministers, uh, as you might expect, all over the world. They'll be calling in virtually. We'd like you at home to engage, uh, to send us comments, um, and you can do that uh, on social media. And when doing that, please use the hashtag um, regional perspectives uh, CE. Okay, so just use that. Um, we have. Uh, 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 also, we're going to use this opportunity to, to build on the outcomes of the WCE, uh, WCEF Plus Climate Summit that took place here in the Netherlands earlier this year, and just recently the WCEF uh, Summit that took place in Canada. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity um, to make progress here, and, and we're, we're going to hear about all of that progress from our speakers. Okay, lots to get through. Um, let me introduce our first speaker. Uh, I can already see her online. Hello again. Um, it's the UN Assistant Secretary General and Head of the New York Office at the UN Environment Program, Ms. Ligia Noronha. Welcome, thank you for joining us, Ms. Noronha. Can you hear me okay? You're on mute, actually. The famous I know. I three words. I was trying words to unmute, I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> Perfect. You succeeded. Ms. Noronha, um, COP26 is uh, less than two months away. Um, tell us, uh, what are you hoping for when it comes to the, the circular economy uh, being discussed there? What, what can we expect? Hi, Ken and Excellency. Good morning and all, to all the Excellencies who are connected. Uh, it's really nice to be here this morning. And uh, let me take a step back. I can have before I get directly into this, because if you look at the climate change crisis that we face, um, you also have the other planetary crisis, which is biodiversity loss and pollution, and underpinning all of these is unsustainable consumption and production. And this is what the science tells us, that, uh, you know, that it's the unsustainable consumption and production that is pushing for all of this. Uh, and uh, as a result of this, um, we need to change course. And the science also tells us that there are six key sectors that need change, energy and extractives, infrastructure and buildings, but also food, land and ocean use. And this is where circularity makes a big difference because circularity advances sustainable consumption and production. And here is where the circular economy is so important. Uh, and, uh, you know, UNEA, the United Nations Environmental Assembly, defined the circular economy as one that retains the value of products, materials, and resources in the economy for as long as possible mm -hmm. and aims to regenerate natural systems. And it is here that you see the connection with climate change. Because when you retain the, the value in the system and you reduce the impact of new virgin materials, you're actually reducing the amount of emissions that you are going to be putting out in the air. But you're also uh, increasing the possibility of sequestration because you leave more of the natural systems out there. Hence, having um, a circular economy as a key aspect of the climate agenda is absolutely important take, uh, going forward. Uh, there is a lot of literature out there which already shows you where and how circular economy can contribute to this. Mm -hmm. And the climate change debate is picking it up, and it has been there. We, uh, the Gasserian, you'll hear the commissioner talking about Gasseria later, already has a, COP, uh, 20, uh, uh, an, uh, a report for COP26, which is going to be presented there. But there's a lot of discussion already happening around the COP26 on circularity. So you're going to have a lot of information on this as part of the discussions yeah. around resource efficiency and circularity. 
Okay, and, and what is the UN doing specifically when it comes to the circular economy then? So the UN is doing a lot of things with regard to the circular economy because we've been um, almost at the forefront along with Ellen MacArthur Foundation on these issues from the start because as I said before, it is so central to addressing sustainable or unsustainable consumption and production. And so in the context of this unsustainability to address circularity really pushes um, unsustainable consumption and production into more sustainable parts. So what's the UN doing? The UN has developed a number of pathways, tools, uh, and ways in which policies, regulatory policies that can be used to take this forward. But more than that, it has been supporting a lot of the regional perspectives that you're going to hear of today. We've been working with the European Union on the Global Alliance for Circular Economy and Resource Efficiency, which is to move towards a just transition. Mm. We've been working with uh, the Latin America Circular Alliance, uh, which was set out in February of 2021 with the Africa Circular Economy Alliance, which was introduced in 2019 as part of AMSEN. And, and, so the, and of course, with the Partnership of Circular Economy and Alan MacArthur Foundation. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, the UN itself has been working with each other to push the agenda forward. So very so much part so of the whole thing. There's a lot of work being done, clearly, a lot of partnerships being created. Why are we not yet there then? Why is the circular economy not this cornerstone, which we all at the table here, and I'm sure online, think it should be of our, of our um, uh, climate resilient future? You know, Akana, this is one of the agendas that has moved forward faster than most other agendas. So you should be saying, why has I it should, moved so I fast? I should be happy. Okay, okay. You should be happy. I'm impatient. Than... I'm impatient, Ms. <laughs> Noronha. I want progress. We need radical change. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And we are with you there. We need radical change. But circularity is part of a number of other aspects of unsustainable consumption and production, and all of them need attention, and that's what we're trying to push forward. But we are getting really good traction with circularity and circular economy. So you will get there for sure. So don't worry about it. Um, it's, and to your question, why are we not there yet? For a number of reasons. One is the language. We need to be uh, using similar language, which all countries understand. There is no formal, except for the UNEA one, there's no formal definition, which is internationally agreed. So if you want really to get more on board, which is what Gasseri is trying to do, is to get more and more uh, countries on board and have this multilateral fora uh, to take this forward. So you need an internationally agreed definition. You need capacity building around understanding what circularity is and how to go about it. You need tools and, and policies that can enable this in countries, sustainable public procurement policies, which allow secularity to be adopted. So there's a lot then. <laughs> there in is five a lot, minutes, but Ms. Noronha, yeah. you, gave, you gave a fantastic definition, I thought, of circular economy at the start of your, uh, um, your opening remarks. How long is it going to take for us to even agree on what the term means? Well, um, you have a number of member states who are going to be joining, and uh, I'm sure you'll hear, you'll hear them uh, in the context of this. You can agree to the definition, but you need to also absorb it and you know, take it up into your policies and regulations. So what does it really mean to have the value kept in the system? Mm -hmm. You need to unpack that. So it's not just about having the definition, but then the definition needs to be absorbed into policies and, and uh, regulations, and that's where the capacity building comes in. So there are different aspects of what you need to be able to take this forward. Okay, and if you had to then prioritize what you think the, uh, the, the best next step sh should be for the UN, what, what would you say that that is? Well, we've started by supporting all these regional perspectives, and we've also su uh, supporting and, and leading with the European Union on the Global Alliance on Circular Economy and Resource Efficiency. So the first step is to, of course, um, you know, advocate for it, to bring on board many, as many countries as we can, to work with strategic partners such as the EMF uh, and others such as PACE and the World Circular Economy Forum, with whom we've been working uh, from the very beginning, so the more you get all of these different stakeholders on board, the more you, you get the message out there that this is good for the economy, this is good for the environment. But we also need to think about the downsides. And that's why in Gasseri, we speak of a just transition. There are downsides. And you need to keep in mind that this will mean less virgin materials, and that will impact some mm -hmm. countries. So how do you proactively start thinking of the downsides so that you do not lose some when we are all looking for leaving no one behind? And do you have ideas for that? How do you start, how do you start doing that? 
yeah, we start a conversation, we start engaging very clearly with the, with the topics that are of concern to different countries. I've just come from, from a discussion uh, uh, on mineral resource governance. So what do we look for in terms of the material intensity of, say, the COVID recovery? What is required for a green transition? How do we then look at both circularity in terms of helping make this possible, but also enabling perhaps a good return on income to those countries that may, uh, may be losing out losing as a result of a loss of virgin materials? So this is very complex, but very exciting and very, very interesting. Now, fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see if we can move uh, from the UN to the, to the European Commission. Um, uh, so, yes, we are able to do that. Thank you very much, Ms. Noronha. Lots of work to do. I wish you all the best with Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Sinkovicius is with us, the European Commissioner for Environment, Oceans and Fish, uh, Fisheries. Thank you for joining us, Commissioner. Um, now, if I remember rightly, we, we spoke together at the uh, WCEF Plus Climate uh, Summit a while ago, um, and you were talking about the EU Circular Economy Action Plan. Um, tell me, since, since that action plan was launched, what's been accomplished? First of all, uh, good afternoon to everyone, and, and absolutely right. You have a, a, a very good, good, good memory. <laughs> we have had discussion uh, already before. And since uh, we launched... Uh, our circular economy action plan back in, in, in March, so a year and a half ago, it's, it's been quite going ahead quite smoothly. But of course, we have to understand that uh, what we're solving. If we want to solve a triple planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss and, and pollution, we have, first of all, take less from nature and use what we, we take much more effectively, keeping it in, in use for longer and give it back uh, safe and sound. And this uh, is what the EU aims to, to do through its circular economy action plans and, and, and uh, uh, a, a key building block uh, of, of the Green Deal itself. And our objective, of course, first of all, is to reduce consumption footprint and, and, and to double uh, circular material use. So we have already shown how the life cycle approach will work uh, with our very first proposal legislative proposal for a new batteries regulation, where we look at the whole life cycle of batteries, first of all, uh, their design stage, uh, then uh, production, from what uh, and, and how they are made, then use. Uh, of course, our aim is to extend use. And lastly, then uh, what happens afterwards, and most importantly, that they would be recycled and those materials, they would be reused in a batteries in the future. We're about to present a new approach to waste uh, trade so that uh, the circulation of waste across border truly supports a clean and more circular economy because you, if you ship uh, your waste, uh, you're not only getting rid of sort of waste and, and, and solving imaginary problems, but you're actually uh, shipping away all the possible innovation in circular economy. So we also want to stop exporting our waste challenges. Yeah. Our waste is, is our responsibility. And uh, there are some other key elements that we are finalizing, a sustainable products initiative. We're working on the right to repair so that every, mm -hmm. for example, device you buy, you would have a chance to, to repair. We, 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 we fighting and, and, and preparing a legislation against greenwashing and premature obsolescence. Uh, and we have identified seven value chains with, yeah. with high potential for circularity. But I'll stop here as I see you want yeah. to ask another question. Yeah, no, just, just, I mean, you, you can, I hope you can also see, yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic. Those all sound like fantastic initiatives, um, concrete initi initiatives. I do, I don't know, on a personal note, has enough, has as much as you'd hoped been accomplished over the last, um, what is it, six months or so? Well, I think uh, it's, it's one of the, uh, let's say, Green Deal initiative that actually no one really is against it. Everyone is extremely supportive. Only this morning, for example, I had a big, uh, big meeting hosted uh, uh, together with with the CEOs of, of major companies, and they really look look forward very much because they see as a win win solution on 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 saving on resources, on investing into R and D, uh, SME see, 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 see a value here. Uh, NGOs, of course, they are happy when 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 uh, a natural uh, resources are not 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 wasted, and 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 when there is decrease 
on, on uh, of pressure on, on nature. Uh, so I think everyone is, is, is quite happy with it and, and we're move, moving quite fast. Okay. Um, uh, the Assistant Secretary General mentioned, mentioned the platform already, GASERE, the Global Alliance on Circular Economy and Resor Resource Efficiency. Um, and there was a meeting of GASERE at the WCEF in, in Canada just recently. Can you uh, share what the outcome, the main outcomes were from that? So you're right, GASER was launched seven months ago, almost the day uh, uh, to the day in the margins of the United Nations Environment uh, Assembly. And, and, and I'm first of all happy that uh, the family continues to grow. And there were 10 member countries last February. Now we are 15 plus two active observers. And uh, as you say, uh, many ministers and senior representative of Garcia uh, members gathered online last week in the first high level meeting of the Alliance. Uh, we took stock, first of all, of GASIR's activities to date and, and welcome developments like the G20 work uh, uh, because, you know, mentioning in, 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 in G20 uh, the outcome uh, um, circular economy, its importance was already a big step forward. We also uh, commended the work of, of, of the Alliance focal points. They are doing a great job deepening understanding of the opportunities offered by the circular economy uh, transition, especially especially in the relation to biodiversity and, and, and to the green recovery. And I'm sure the outcome will be useful uh, contribution. Mm -hmm. and, and, and main uh, probably point of the meeting was uh, building up uh, to COP15 mm -hmm. uh, on, on biodiversity and COP26 on climate change. And, and the ne next meeting of, of the uh, UNEP uh, UNIA, sorry, in, in, in February 2022 on strengthening actions for nature to achieve the SDGs. But this is still the start. Uh, yeah. For the future, we need to reinforce GASIR cooperation with other regional platforms like the African Circular Economy yeah. Alliance and, in and Latin, uh, America, Latin America. Course, yeah. Absolutely, Caribbean but regional tell, coalition. Tell me then, why, why are people, uh, why is there any hesita hesitancy at all? And, and how do you try and yeah, um, show people that the, you know they, that they shouldn't object. So can you can well, you sketch out those two I, I wouldn't things? Yeah. So I would say that there is no sort of objections. Maybe maybe main hesitancy is is are we all at at, uh, at the same level? How we can help each other uh, to 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 move forward? Uh, because we have uh, even within the EU, we have very well advanced member states, and we have those who still. Uh, untapped those potential and 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 i think it, it requires it requires knowledge it requires of course investments in, into r d uh, businesses has to see uh, those opportunities uh, as, as as well so uh, that's 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 quite uh, a work some businesses they they already doing it but they just don't know <laughs> because they've been saving resources for for, for many uh, many many years uh, but uh, there is always a space for improvement so i think we need to spread the word uh, much better and, and and there will be even even bigger level of us acceptance so in terms of getting civil society and um, and businesses involved uh, are there any initiatives specifically focused on that i mean you mentioned loosely that yeah that they're, they're showing some uh, they're showing interest but how do you really engage them and, and get them even more involved then? So, you know, uh, governments set the regulatory framework. And, and we, we, of course, try to, to, to set the bar high, uh, as our citizens expect, give predictability to business <laughs> and, and, and provide uh, in incentives, uh, incentives for change and help uh, with financial and technical support. But then for, uh, uh, for, for transitions to, to work in practice, citizens and, and business need to act with even greater determination and ambition. And that's why we partner with, with business in our domestic and, and our international work. In Gassier, for example, uh, we have three strategic partners, so the Alan MacArthur Foundation, the platform for accelerating the circular economy, and, and the World uh, Circular Economy Forum. And they are all helping spread the results in, 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 in of our discussions through their networks, of course, engage with the citizens. We need citizens and business to work towards more sustainable production and consumption. Uh, citizens to demand that from, from business to, 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 to understand what it really brings. And I think already we have so many encouraging examples of entrepreneurship, innovation and, and, and commitment, but they need more exposure, more publicity. And, and, and that way, uh, best practices are shared and the real challenges uh, get discussed. In Europe, we have a special forum uh, 
uh, for that, the Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. It's virtual, uh, open space for information and knowledge sharing, open to anyone interested to participate. And as we are at the UN General Assembly, let me also mention New York's yearly Circular City Week as, as also a great example of, of platform to showcase the dynamic of, of speed uh, uh, of the circular uh, uh, transition. Yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely positive. I, 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 I get the sense, though, that you know, somehow there must be a way of, of switching the narrative so that uh, companies are desperate to get through to you. It's, I hope it's not the case that they see, oh, Sinkovich is ca calling on, 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 the, on the caller ID, and they're like, oh, no, not now. It should be the other way around. It should be the other way around. How do you um, yeah, change the conversation in that way? I, I, I feel that that it's 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 not this way. Um, we really, as as I said, you know, uh, only this week, for example, I've, I've, I had a visit at, at one of the biggest uh, uh, textile manufacturers who already are so much advanced, and they actually asking for uh, for for common uh, European. Um, approach. Uh, I, we also are very close to engage with uh, companies who, who, who produce plastics. And they as well, uh, they don't want, you know, that, that, that plastic would be mentioned as something uh, bad. Uh, uh, they want uh, plastic industry to, 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 to strive, but they also want to be part of the solution. And they, they, they understand very well that, that uh, the change has to be uh, drastic. It's not only that we can recycle our weight, uh, way out of it, uh, but there has to be drastic changes in, 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 in what uh, chemicals are used to, 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 to produce uh, plastic. And then, of course, that, that we reuse uh, same and same materials again. I have a big um, uh, also boost from businesses to, to actually uh, create a secondary raw materials market here within the EU, but also we look outside the EU as, mm -hmm. as, as a message to, 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 to countries uh, as a possibility to participate. So there is actually a, a, a good support, uh, support from, 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 from businesses. Uh, always we can, we, can, we can move faster. I'm always for more ambitious, more bold uh, um, change but of course we have to be to be realistic some are very well advanced some are less advanced and we cannot leave yeah. anyone behind on this transition we certainly can't but i prefer idealism rather than realism let's, let's still be positive <laughs> um and impatience is an underrated virtue let's not forget about that so let's be impatient thank you very much mr sinkovich wish thank you all you. the best thank you Maybe, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. To the commissioner, I think yeah. you were you were you kind of you were asking whether people or companies don't want to be called by the commissioner or by my, myself as a minister for the environment. But I think it's actually the other way around. I think that the front runners are calling us, the commission, yeah. UN, and Correct. member states, Correct. saying we are front runners. But you should help us create a Correct. level playing field for our uh, circular economy products by including, for example, a mandatory. Uh, percentage of rec recycled materials so that we have a level playing field yeah. and maybe you should change the tax system so that the use of virgin uh, plastics for example may be taxed higher so, so companies are calling you asking to to pay higher taxes no they are asking us to to, to have a to have a level playing field that, yeah. that when they are front runners <coughs> in circularity being it a circular mattresses for example in the netherlands or many other products mm. they want to have a level playing field and to have the chance to be competitive on the market and they ask us for a level playing field with companies who are not as circular as they maybe should be and will be in the future so i think actually they are calling upon the Commission, the, the United Nations, uh, the Netherlands, but I think also all the other colleagues. And that's a good thing because we have to help those front runners because they are the front runners of this change, which I think is, and I know the commissioner will, uh, I, I hope, agree, and I'm sure he will agree. Uh, Absolutely. We're in this together. There's only one way forward. You know, we will not solve the carbon crisis if we don't have a full, more circular economy. What you can't have one without another. Very clear. Thank you, both of you. And we'll be talking more about leveling the playing field later on today as well. All the best, Ms. Sinkovicius. Thank you. Thanks for having me. OK, before continuing with our program, let's, uh, let's have a quick look back at uh, some of the uh, country commitments that were shared at the WCEF Plus Climate Con Conference uh, earlier this year. Switching to renewable energies can make 55% of the uh, reductions of emissions that we need, but the other 45% globally uh, can be tackled only by changing the way we produce and we use products. That's why it's clear 
economy is so, so important to reach our carbon neutrality goals. So we have to educate our people on the importance to the environment, importance to their health, but more fundamentally to their livelihood. Circular economy provides them with alternatives. It's that toxic sludge of our own waste and effluent that we're putting back into the environment. That needs to stay in the economy. We're taking this stuff out of the environment, putting it into the economy. That's a good thing, creates jobs and opportunities, but it needs to stay there. We must be aware that even if we will be successful, we will not recover the environmental equilibrium that we had one century ago. In, at least we will not recover in a short time. So, uh, whatever we do, we have to do it very soon. The sooner, the better. Redefining human relationship with nature, making sure that we actually stay within the boundaries of the planet that we are uh, dependent on. One crucial means to get to that point is to use the circular economy to make sure that we can uh, get to uh, action uh, towards a just transition. Uh, and in that, we know that the circular economy is, is really key. Evidentemente, nos encontramos ante una situación donde tenemos que replantearnos métodos productivos y formas de vivir. We must rethink and reimagine what harmony with nature can look like. This means, among other things, using our resources more efficiently and acknowledging that our actions are part of an ecosystem where everything is connected. It means reconceptualizing things like the idea of waste and moving to a paradigm where we think of virtually everything as a resource. We see circular economy as a way to diversify economy, create new and better jobs, and develop skills for the future. Ghana believes that our transition to circular economy will prevent waste and pollution, keep materials in longer use, and regenerate natural systems that lead to a more resilient economy. The next decade, we make or break. We must join forces for limiting the temperature rise to 1.5 degrees. Together, let's create a circular economy. At this point in time, no government is doing anything like enough. But the UK will continue to step up alongside our friends in the Netherlands and elsewhere. As presidents of COP26 and the G7, we're asking governments to work with business and civil society to help us try to flip the market away from destruction towards sustainability. The shift towards a more circular economy is an essential part of that. Now, a hopeful video there, look back at the uh, WCEF Plus Climate event that, was, that took place earlier this year. Okay, time now for our high-level panel um, to discuss from a regional perspective what progress uh, has been made when it comes to the circular economy. Um, and I'd like to go straight ahead and introduce our three guests. Um, the first is the Colombian Vice Minister for the Environment, uh, Minister, uh, Mr. Nicolas Galarza. Welcome, Mr. Galarza. Um, we have uh, the Director uh, from Pollution Control and Environmental Health um, at the Nigerian Federal Ministry of the Environment, uh, Mr. Charles Ikea. Hello, Mr. Ikea. Oh, uh, yes. I think, I think we're having some connection problems, um, but hopefully uh, you'll, you'll stay online. And the executive lead for institutions, governments, and cities at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, Mr. Um, uh, Jocelyn Blériot. Mr. Blériot, welcome. Thank you. Um, before I open up uh, our conversation to all of you, though, um, Stephen, you've heard, uh, you saw the reflections. We've already had some uh, great contributions. Um, are we being ambitious enough? Um, was, was the summit ambitious enough? Yeah, that's that's the, the general line in all your questions, and rightfully so, because um, it's, it's not lo no longer one minute before 12 at midnight. Eh? We're, we're way beyond that. And yes, I feel a wind of change, and I think there's the, the optimism of the Assistant uh, Secretary General, but also you've heard the European Commissioner with very concrete actions. Uh, so I think there is really a wind of change, and I think there's a broad consensus and it is still growing, and we need that, mm. that if we don't make our economy more circular, we will not only uh, uh, tackle the problems of the loss of biodiversity, mm. but also achieving a, 
remaining the, 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 the temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius is just unobtainable. So it's clear that talking about the circular economy is not a, a nice extra option. Mm -hmm. It's an integral part of any, I think, uh, real strategy to tackle climate change and to uh, halt the loss of biodiversity. And I think it's, the good news is that we're there. And, and what of about course here, the bad here? news is that we're, in the Netherlands, we're, try, we're, yeah. trying our, we're, trying our, we're doing our best. We're, for example, looking at public procurement, one of the things that governments can do themselves, huh? more circular public procurement. And I've been in office for six weeks, mm. but I've spoken to a lot of companies with very nice ideas and very good new products. You know, in the Netherlands, we like to cycle. We, at the problem, we have circular bicycle lanes being developed. So they are circular, circular mattresses I mentioned, but many other initiatives, and they are calling upon us, on government officials, ministers, institutions, to step up to the plate and, uh, and help them. Uh, so in the end, I'm optimistic, but I'm not naive. We still have a very long way to go. None of us, I don't have, and I think our colleagues from Nigeria and also from Colombia, none of us have found the magic bullet yet. We've got a long way to go, and we need to learn from each other. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we can do that. If I may tell one example. Sure. In, in Chile, there's, there's a start of a uh, business, Algramo, um, uh, and they are actually having uh, food and drinks and detergents. They've skipped the plastic out of their production. So consumers don't have all this small plastic uh, stuff when they use their products, and that's good for the circularity. But if for, that, for consumers, it's also a 30% cost reduction. And that's important if you want to have a just transition. And I, I learned yesterday that they're actually now uh, scaling up to Mexico and Indonesia. So it shows that across the globe, we are learning from each other. So in the end, you're impatient, and I'm both impatient and optimistic. Okay, good. Well, let's stay in that part of the world. Let's see how impatient and optimistic um, are, uh, your, your colleagues are in that part of the world. Let's turn to uh, Vice Minister um, uh, Galarza. How is the circular economy in, uh, in Colombia being integrated into political and, and economic life? Thank you, Ikena. I think uh, the first thing I'd like to highlight is, is the fact that uh, here in Colombia, we've tried to get the uh, circular economy agenda at the forefront of our, poli uh, of our policies. We were the first country uh, to have a national strategy of circular economy. And that in itself was, of course, a big step. You've, you've heard about it uh, a little bit. Uh, we got this uh, knowing that we couldn't do this alone just with uh, the national government. We had to work with the private sector, with academia. Uh, but evidently, the, the strategy itself was not enough. We knew that we needed to get this off the ground, and we wanted to take this nationwide. And uh, for that reason, we developed a governance structure that was not heavily centralized, but that allowed us to have uh, a more than 25 uh, regional hubs uh, uh, on, on circular economy, aiming to foster the narrative, to include it at the regional level, but mainly also to, to uh, foster the development and the mapping of projects, particularly projects that, as, as probably the ones that, that, that the minister uh, was mentioning in Chile, are on the ground, are putting, uh, are having excellent ideas, but uh, for some uh, reasons maybe are not uh, being mainstreamed enough and we need to increase their reach and their scope. And so getting this uh, mapping of uh, initiatives of circular economy nationwide is also very, very important. And as a third uh, line of work, we, as also was mentioned in the past, we need to get, uh, I think it was uh, Commissioner Sinevicius who was mentioning the need of clear norms and a clear regulatory framework. We are working right now and we'll be soon launching a new uh, regulation mm -hmm. for water reuse, uh, providing uh, guidelines and uh, enabling this activity for a number of sectors, which has been long expected, is very basic, uh, and, and, but and there is one. Yeah. Mr. Galarza, it sounds again uh, very positive. Um, the national strategy on circular economy sounds very grand, and I, I, I like the um, um, the clear 
um, achievements that you're talking about. Um, if you were to recommend, it's obviously working. So if, if you were to, if someone else in uh, you know, uh, Panama, let's say they want to start their own national strategy, what's, can you pick out like one, one singular thing that is essential to do to make it a success? You already mentioned less centralization. Maybe that also means less red tape, uh, more regional autonomy, data sharing. But what, is there anything else or is it one of those four things that, that's really allowed it to be a success? I think it's important to get this uh, hand in hand with the private sector. I yeah. think we, 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 you know, uh, of course, in a lot of cases from the government side, uh, there is some uh, resistance. But as, as the minister was saying, and as the commissioner was saying, we have a private sector that, that, that has understood that we cannot go on with the economic model that we have been following for the, for the last centuries and that we need to change uh, that narrative. And if we get the private sector on board since the beginning, then the resistance that we're gonna face is gonna be so. The, the recommendation for, for colleagues that are listening would be to get, get the private sector on board yeah. from starters. And that, yeah. that, that I think is gonna, is gonna be very, very helpful. And Colombia is, of course, also the co-chair of the um, your regional, well, the the Latin American and Caribbean Circular Economy Coalition. What kind of role has, has that coalition had in uh, in also making, uh, yeah, entrenching the circular economy in um, uh, in such a successful way? Well, uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do is uh, to to position a change of, of narrative because even, let's say, let's talk about the regulatory framework. That was something that I wanted to raise, uh, to, to touch upon, not only on the norms that we're issuing, but what it means in terms of having a sound and clear regulatory framework because the narrative that we've been following is regulation from disposal and discharge Namely, the codes say this is how you're supposed to dispose whichever material, this is how you're supposed to discharge a, a given material. And we need to transition mm -hmm. from that narrative to, an, to, to a narrative where our norms uh, regulate how you can reuse it. And this might be uh, very kind of obvious but when you look at the, the regulations, we are just kind of uh, getting getting started. So mm -hmm. we would uh, we, we are hoping uh, to 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 spearhead the development of mm -hmm. this narrative uh, in the region through the coalition uh, to 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 make that that shift yeah. on thought because otherwise it is always going to be a, a kind of uh, s uh, swimming against the current, and that always yeah. is uh, increases layers of uh, difficulty. And I think having that on mind is going to help everyone to to okay. have a, a, sw a swifter transition. Okay, so the coalition is is also uh, very helpful. Um, let me go to um, a, a non-governmental organization, Mr. Blerio from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Um, your organization is considered uh, a yeah, a pioneer in the field of the circular economy. Um, what do you think needs to happen to, to foster more international cooperation uh, on the circular economy? Well, thank you very much. And I think a, a lot of it has been alluded to already. And I'd like to go back to the point that uh, Ligia was making earlier. It is about clarifying what we mean and agreeing on what circular economy means and what the transition entails. And one thing, uh, to also address a question that I'm sure you will ask me is, yes, we're making progress. No, it's not fast enough. But I would say this. If we had that discussion a year ago, I would have heard the term waste management at least three times by now. Mm. It hasn't been on the table at all. It means that the systemic nature of the circular economy and the transition is much more understood than it was even a few months ago. And it's about moving from treating the topic in itself as a standalone issue, which invariably leads to reducing its impact, 
but also to clarify its cross-cutting nature. So it's relevant to climate change, it's relevant to biodiversity loss, and as such, it makes a significant contribution to solving issues that most countries are already focusing on. And again, Ligia alluded to the fact that at the heart of what we're seeing today is business as usual, is how we make the products, including the food that we have in the economy, how we distribute them, how we use them, and how we deal with them at their end of useful life. It is about SDG 12, it is about sustainable consumption and production, but it goes beyond that as well. So what needs to happen is the coalitions that have been mentioned, you know, the Global Alliance on Circular Economy and Resource Efficiency, of which we're a very happy partner, the Latin American Coalition, of which we're a partner as well. Mm -hmm. Getting that logic very tight, getting the case studies, also having frameworks for governments who want to start their transition but do not necessarily know where to start. And this is why we've produced the circular, Universal Circular Economy Policy Goals, mm -hmm. which uh, at are the number of five. It's about stimulating design for the circular economy, managing resources to preserve value, making the economics work, and that's really important. That's what uh, Mr. Van Weyenberg was, was alluding to. The fiscal mm -hmm. framework is really important as well. What we tax, what we incentivize. It's about investing in innovation, infrastructure, and skills, and collaborating for system change, which... Well, you've, you've, you've covered a, a lesson... Well. There's a lot to unpack there. You've, got, you've covered a lot of things that, that, that we need to do. Um, let's, in concrete terms then, what would you like to see happen uh, in New York at the end of the week? More collaboration between member states, exchange on good practices, creation of alliances and coalitions, knowledge sharing, capacity building. And one thing that we haven't mentioned yet, but, but which I feel is really important, is the trade dimension. Mm. Because the circular economy is about material flows, and if it, if it is to scale globally, that will have an impact on trade. It's quite significant that the circular economy has become a key topic of WTO discussions over the past three years. So some discussions can be tense, difficult, but they can also be very constructive. And having that logic of exchange and really strong dialogue that goes into the way countries deal with each other and the circular economy memorandum of understanding that China and the European Union have signed three years ago is also part of those mechanisms that need to be pushed forward. Yeah, so more, you'd like to see more attention to the uh, raw material market, uh, more conversations about well, that. Well, that's only one part of it. I yeah. wouldn't want to reduce it to that. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go to uh, Nigeria. That's a, another country that's innovating uh, when it comes to the circular economy. Um, uh, in April, we heard uh, from Nigeria about the progress made on the adoption of extended producer responsibility policies, which as far as I understand it in plain English is, is ensuring that um, companies are responsible for what happens to their products at the end of their life cycle. Um, what other progress has been made in Nigeria over the last couple of months on the circular economy, Mr. Ikea? Yeah, um, thank you very much. And uh, also let me apologize. I've been having uh, some technical uh, hitches. Uh, hopefully um, such will not occur, occur again. Um, yes, um, um, we have um, done quite um, a lot. Um, let me start by saying that um, last year we um, developed two policies, two key policies that would help us in the implementation of circular economy in the country, the National Policy on Solid Waste Management and the National Policy on Plastic Waste uh, Management that focuses on uh, plastic, plastic life cycle analysis. Now, uh, moving forward, um, since uh, April, um, we have been able to um, include the waste sector in our NDC. We have revised our nationally determined uh, contributions to include the waste sector uh, in the NDC. And so it will present as an excellent opportunity, you know, excellent entry point for the application of circular economy because, because of the advantage of linking the bioeconomy with blue economy and green growth in a way that links back better 
and promotes resilient economic growth models post COVID 19. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you are well, Nigeria, um, sometime this year, joined the GPAP. We are in the process of uh, domesticating the GPAP into National Plastic Action uh, Partnership. Of course, the goal of the NPAP is to support the government in the creation and implementation of a circular economy framework for the plastic sector in Nigeria in order to reduce plastic waste and pollution. And Mr. Ike, what about your, the Nigeria's membership and, and actually co-chairing the um, African Circular Economy Alliance? Uh, to what extent does that alliance also help you further your circular economy ambitions? Yes, um, Nigeria is a co-chair and uh, in, in fact a founding member of uh, uh, African Circular Economy uh, Alliance. And under that auspices, we, in collaboration with other uh, members, have been um, in the forefront of driving policy development, sharing best practices for the creation of legal and regulatory frameworks supporting the circular, uh, supporting circular economy um, within the continent. Of course, we also, under the um, ACEA, um, uh, playing a key role in advocacy and raising mm -hmm. awareness on circular economy at national, regional, and global levels, as well as scaling circular economy businesses and projects. But uh, coming down to what we are doing as a country, mm -hmm. we have a national, uh, a Nigerian circular economy working our group. Mr. Ike, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to interrupt for a minute because we're having some sound issues, but hopefully they'll clear up in a minute and then I'll come back to you. Um, let me go, first of all, to, uh, let's, back to the, in the studio here, uh, Mr. von Weyenberg. Um, uh, what role is the Netherlands then playing? We, we've heard a little bit about what's happening um, uh, regionally around the world. Um, what's the Netherlands doing internationally when it comes to uh, the circular economy, especially here at the UN, let's say? Yeah, well, we're in a number of alliances. Uh, for example, the Circular Economy for Net Zero Initiative, together with our colleagues from Japan and the World Economic Forum. Uh, and then we're especially focusing on hard to abate sectors like the steel construction. Um, but we're also having very good uh, bilateral uh, contacts, for example, with uh, Nigeria, uh, but also with Indonesia and Ghana, because in the end, I think no one of us has all the answers. And the only way to move forward is actually uh, putting it on the agenda. I totally agree with Jocelyn. A year ago, we would have a total different uh, discussion. So we're really moving ahead and we're learning from each other. Um, uh, just as I'm still amazed, you know, I think that in 20 years, the circular economy will be very normal. Maybe just as normal as that today we are here in a virtual meeting with, uh, with participants from Colombia, Nigeria, to New York and uh, The Hague. Uh, so we are really making progress. So uh, I'm very optimistic and I think uh, the fact that we all, we're all on the same, in the same boat here, the global boat. Yeah. Uh, and I'm getting increasingly aware of the importance of these coalitions, and I believe there's also the, the, the new one, a new alliance going to be set up? Or? Yeah, we're actually working together with our friends from Colombia, uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation in Nigeria, on launching a coalition of countries in the coming months, a new group of friends. We're almost there, so uh, it's a bit of a teaser, uh, but, uh, but we'll, 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 we really hope to move forward there because we think that we have to put this, the circular economy to the, to the center of also the climate and the biodiversity debate. And it's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not a sideshow, it's the main show. Yeah. Okay, the Group of Friends Initiative. Let's go to Colombia. Mr. Galarza, uh, what do you think of um, uh, joining yet uh, another, another coalition? In, in all cases, the experience of Colombia has been rather positive. I think... Uh, 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 Jocelyn Blériot was uh, highlighting the fact that uh, this is an opportunity for sharing successful experiences, scaling up best practices, and uh, we, we don't see any harm on that. We, we welcome partnership, we welcome collaboration. I'm very excited to hear uh, Minister Ikea uh, on, on the prospects and progress being made in, in Nigeria, and we also are hoping that we can 
take our leadership to another level and um, help people develop what we've accomplished always with a humble spirit and trying to learn from our peers. Okay, let's let's go back then uh, to Mr. Ike and see if he can join us again. Mr. Ike, in um, are, are you with us? Yes, I think you are. Yes, um, in yes, in pigeon in pigeon English in in Nigeria, there's a saying: "Naija no de carry last." Abi, so uh, which yes. basically translates to um, Nigerians always strive to finish first. You've you've already um, shown how Nigeria is taking a kind of regional leadership role, uh, co-chairing the um, the alliance that you mentioned. How about um, how do you see Nigeria's role internationally? Uh, yes, just like the previous speakers uh, said, I, I think the way to to go is to um, build um, partnerships and, uh, of course, uh, share um, experiences on uh, best um, practices. I think partnership is very, very uh, key and is very important. And I think that is what uh, the African Circular Economy Alliance is uh, also advocating and um, uh, good at it. We are also collaborating with some uh, um, organizations, some coalitions, particularly um, those in the South-South, um, like the um, Latin America and the Caribbean uh, coalitions. Of course, you can recall that um, uh, recently we collaborated, the ACDA collaborated with the um, Circular Economic Coalition in Latin America and the Caribbeans to host a section as they just concluded World Circular Economy um, uh, meeting that took place in, uh, on the 15th of this month. But um, coming down to the national uh, level, like I said, Nigeria has a national um, Nigeria economy working uh, group that is, is a voluntary think tank comprising of academia, government, the private sector, non-state actors coming together to converge ideas to develop a robust circular economy agenda for the country. Presently, um, a feasibility study on um, circular economy is ongoing in, in the country. And it is expected that a, an inception report uh, will be ready by the 30th of this month. Actually, the study is entitled Circular Economy, Natural Capital and Green Growth Agenda Setting Challenges and Opportunities for Donor and Bank Support and PPP Investment. So we hope that the, um, a draft report will be ready by the 30th of this month. Mm -hmm. And then we will do the official launch of the Nigeria Circular Economy program in October of this year. Right, so it's clear and that a lot, a lot is study, happening. A lot is happening. Yes, and, the, uh, yeah, the outcome of this uh, feasibility study will lead, you know, to the development of a nine-year circular economy program um, starting from 2022 to 2030. Um, and so, so many other activities are, are ongoing. Well, I'll be sure to uh, give you a call in nine years' time, okay? And uh, to, to get an update, okay? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Let me go um, uh, to Mr. Blerio. Uh, Mr. Blerio, um, the Group of Friends Alliance is, of course, um, uh, a New York-based uh, uh, alliance. It sounds very positive. Um, and you've already mentioned how important building these coalitions are. But I'm curious, what, what is next specifically for the Ellen MacArthur Foundation? What, what's at the top of your priority list? Well, first of all, continuing to push the agenda and, and talking to as much as many stakeholders as we can and being very targeted in our in our actions. So it's about complementarity. You you asked about the growing number of coalitions. I think they are very useful insofar as they know what each of them is doing and they complement each other rather than add and duplicate. And I think there's still a lot of work to, to be done on that front. So there's no there's really no problem by having another group, especially in New York, at that level, fostering collaboration between member states, 
at UN level and also potentially being able to feed back those working groups into processes such as the United Nations Environmental Assembly. At the foundation, to answer your question, we're really focused now on the, uh, continuing to push the economic rationale and also to show the importance of having circular economy as a key framework to address climate change and biodiversity loss because everything stems from the way our economy is structured. And at the moment, it would be it could be tempting to think that we have the choice between linear and circular, and circular gets a lot of air time. We should just go for that. But that would be forgetting that what we have as well is a system which is hardwired for and by the linear economy. Mm. All the cost structure, the incentives, the fiscal policies are pushing linearity. And that's one of the big missions that we have set ourselves, is to look at the policy conditions and to help by fostering the private and public sector debate, move to a true system ships as opposed to just putting pockets of circularity onto a linear system, which would be a very, very detrimental uh, way forward. Yeah, and I suppose that's where alliances like um, uh, the Group of Friends Alliance can really come into its own at the UN level and uh, homogenize a definition, for instance, and, and you know, progress can be made from there. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much uh, to you, Mr. Blériot, and uh, to all of our panelists, uh, Mr. Galaza and Mr. Ikea. Um, uh, thank you for joining us. I wish you all the best. Mr. von Weyenberg, are you happy with what you've heard today? It, there's a lot being done. Yes. And, 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 I'm, and I'm, I'm at, I think and everyone we've heard today is as impatient as you are. And I think that's good because I'm getting you, a reputation. You, no, not I, I, I hope to live up to it. Uh, <laughs> you will live up to it because it's important. We are um, so. I think it, I hear about optimism, but also a reality check that we still have a very long way to go, and that it requires systemic change. And systemic change is n never coming automatically. It requires that we change patterns we've been used to for years, for decades, for centuries. In our taxation system, norms for recycle, it's beyond waste management, as I think is very rightfully uh, put earlier by, uh, uh, by Jocelyn Blériot. We, we have to really change this. And we cannot do it alone as government officials. So uh, I think Nicola very rightfully said we can do this together with the private sector. There are front runners there, and they need our help to improve their business model, help them innovate. But we're not entrepreneurs. I'm not an entrepreneur. We should use the, the, uh, the innovative power help it where that's possible, and give them a better level playing field by using taxation measures, but also by uh, mandatory percentages of recycled goods. Mm -hmm. And we can do it, and if I may end maybe on a positive note, sure. and it's, it's in, the, in the area of waste management, so I'm, hardly, I'm <laughs> almost hesitant to mention it, but um, uh, we, after years of discussion in the Netherlands, we implemented on the 1st of July a mandatory deposit and return system for small plastic bottles, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, etc. Big discussion. A mandatory deposit system. But now, this weekend, it was World Cleanup Day. And all the people, all the volunteers cleaning up our, our gardens and our beaches in the Netherlands, they found 37% less small plastic bottles. So it shows that if we have direct impact, together with the market sector, we have an obligation to have a 90% recycle rate of those small plastic bottles, and we have a deposit scheme, that we can make progress. And there are many initiatives in the private sector which I'm very, very optimistic about. So uh, uh, it's, um, uh, we're not there yet. There's no room for complacency, but I think there is room for optimism. Okay. Well, that is a positive note to end on. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> From your mouth, that sound, that's it. <laughs> Listen, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for joining us. Um, that brings our session today to a close. Um, uh, don't forget to stay in the loop uh, to see what happens next when it comes to the circular uh, economy agenda. Um, um, thank you once again to uh, all of our panelists for joining us. Um, and I've said it a couple of times already, but really wish everyone all the best. Um, there is lots of work to get done, but it will get done because we just have no option. We have to do it. Thank you very much, everyone. See you again soon.